second at the close of play it was 13 for one Haynes three and Roger Harper who was put in as a night watchman some night watchman he's made a double hundred in first class cricket he is there with him a light appeal taken up by the batsman Marshall one for ten and Hadley two overs one maiden none for two so tomorrow we are in for plenty of excitement weather permitting the rest of the world need 340 the more. The scene is unchanged. The rain still comes down. It's like a lake turning from marsh to lake. And we hear that the match is likely to be abandoned. That's all we have. But we will give you a further report. Welcome to Lords, but that is the picture which tells the story. From the early morning, we've had rain here at Lords, and just after 12 o'clock, the umpires paddled out and performed the formality of calling off this bicentenary match. Great cheers there from the faithful few who stayed, as David Shepherd from the far side and Dickie Bird waddled to the middle. I don't think they need have gone that far, to be truthful. One look from the balcony should have been enough, but you know they're sticklers for form here at the headquarters. And out they went. That was the sign David Shepherd made. Five past twelve, and rather sadly, this glorious bicentenary match, which had promised so much, on the final day, a great finish in prospect, great batting behind us and declarations along the way. But we have no control over the weather, and that's how it all ended. I suppose the one man who might have a regret about Mike Gatting's declaration late last night would be Sunil Gavaskar, because his very last innings was not 180 of his first innings, but naught, 13 for one, but he still smiles, and uh, he'll understand that cricket in the end usually has its way. Uh, I have selected Sunal Gaviskar as the best batsman and the best tank for the match. The Man of the Match Award for bowling again receives a check for £2,000. It's a particular to pleasure to welcome a great captain of England and Middlesex, a former president of MCC, knighted last year for his great services to cricket, Sir George, probably much better known as Gubby Allen. Money. I'm afraid it must be, without any shadow of doubt, who I thought bowled beautifully the whole time, and Malcolm Marsh. The best fielder receives a cheque for £1,000. This is a joint decision by Sir George and Dennis. And may I ask you, Sir George, to reveal the ultimate decision? And I'm sorry, it was very difficult to come between these two, but we did decide at the end that perhaps Clive Rice would be the fielder of this match. And that act was effectively the last performance of this bicentenary match played at Lords. Rather sad ending with so much in promise, but uh, this is how it all ended. We come to Lords for the second match, and let's take.